Joining me from Washington Live is Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions. He's the ranking member of the Budget Committee. Senator, thank you for joining us here today. You're not you. uh, you're, you're not very optimistic that you're going to make progress on a deal um, uh, with uh, with the vice president and his group today, are you? You know, I, I'm just um, I don't think we can count on it. Uh, those groups haven't been so effective. I've I've believed we should go through the regular order. Uh, a process for budgeting uh, in the budget committee, but uh, John Kyle and some of the members that are part of that are good people, so uh, we can hope that something good will come out of it. You know, the bond market, when you look at the markets, the markets are telling us that um, they think that the debt ceiling is going to be raised. The question is the process of how do you, how do you get to that? Um, what kind of cuts do you need to see? How, can, can, do you think we're going to be able to raise that debt ceiling and it'll buy us time at least through the end of next year? Well, I think the bond market would be awfully disappointed if the debt limit were raised and we did not reduce spending and get a, re, uh, change the trajectory of debt that we're on, which is clearly unsustainable. Last week's economic numbers yeah. were really troubling with unemployment up, manufacturing down. The Fed reported just yesterday that a number of their regions uh, had negative uh, growth compared to last couple of months. Now you see, so now you're, this is a, you're, you're, a you're, situation. You're, your friends across the aisle, though, will use those same statistics to say this is why we can't be cutting too deeply yeah. and too indiscriminately because if you cut now, you, you, you cut too deeply now, you hurt the economy in the near term and longer term, that hurts your chances of, of, of deficit reduction and getting the debt under control. Christine, this is a key question you just raised and we need to talk about. What we know is for the last two and a half years, we've borrowed and we've spent uh, money we did not have. To recover from have a not... huge, huge financial crisis uh, that nearly took down the American economy. We borrowed money we did not have in large amounts from the future to spend the day to artificially stimulate this economy, and it has not worked. We've had the lowest bounce back we've ever had from a major recession. It's very, very dangerous. We cannot continue to borrow and spend. Now, this is what is threatening the American growth, and the economic studies of Rogoff and Reinhardt mm -hmm. are when you reach 90% of your GDP, your economy, the debt equaling that, then you lose 1% of economic growth. Yeah, you're quoting uh, uh, Ken Rogoff and Carmen Reinhardt who wrote the fabulous book, This Time is Different. They've studied yes. all of these financial crises, but even debt hawks but, uh, will... What I'm saying to you, mm -hmm. so don't you think that that means that we, we have no choice but to figure a way to have stability in our economy and not continue to run up debt. So let's talk about the jobs that we've been creating, some 50-some thousand jobs last time around. The reason why there weren't more created is because, frankly, you've got uh, state budgets in crisis, local budgets in crisis, stimulus money running out, and they are slashing public sector jobs. For each one of those public sector jobs, according to Moody's Analytics, Senator, there's another 1.3 private sector jobs. Uh, if, can we afford to keep seeing all of these jobs disappear, and will the private sector magically just recover around it to absorb them? If we get this economy on a sound footing, the private sector will recover. Uh, Mr. Bernanke says we have to have 2.5% economic growth to stay level with jobs. Mm -hmm. Last quarter was 1.8% economic growth. The borrowing and spending, the idea of Keynesian stimulation of the economy is not working. We've already spent uh, far too much. This debt will be a burden on us for generations to come. And that's why all the economists are telling us you've got to get off this path. Yeah, you know, um, I, somehow I knew you'd go back to the <laughs> to the Keynesian argument. Why did I know you would go there? Uh, well, but, I mean, it's a really a national debate, isn't it, Christine? It is. We're talking about that. Can we uh, artificially, by borrowing money from mm -hmm. the future, spending it today, generate growth? Well, maybe sometime you can make a, a dent with it. But as a systemic policy, it's disastrous. Well, I tell It'll you, put us in a position that we can't. It, the, the, the debt becomes so large, it begins to pull our growth down, which is happening today. Yeah, and even the budget hawks, I will say, the people who are concerned about budgets and for years who've been saying we've got to get this under control. It's easier to start trying to get it under control in good times, isn't it? But when it's really yeah. bad times like it is and the economy is weakening, it, even now they're concerned about too much slashing indiscriminately and not in a smart way um, it could be dangerous to the, to the recovery uh, going forward. And, and what they worry about, I'll be honest with you, the number crunchers, what they worry about is is that politicians are not very good money managers. That's why we have been had to raise this thing over and over and over again, and now it just happens to be a really tricky time, Senator. 
Well, you're, you're right. Politicians are not very good at spending money, and uh, we need to send them less, uh, and they need to contain uh, our spending and spend less, that's for sure. Uh, I think if we do that, uh, you know, the International Monetary Fund mm -hmm. told the Brits, uh, don't change your policy. There were protests that uh, you shouldn't cut spending as much as they're doing today. But the International Monetary Fund says, no, stay the course. You'll be, this is the sound way to get your economy under control. Yeah. We increased spending in the last two years, non-defense, discretionary spending, 25%. And over the past and 10 years, we've given a lot of money back not... to people in tax cuts. It's the 10-year anniversary of the first Bush tax cuts, too. So you'll have your colleagues on the other side of the aisle arguing about how that, you know, how get that given, but we didn't have the money to do that, too. So we have to leave it there. Yeah. Senator Sessions, okay. I appreciate Thank it. Come you. back, because there's going to be so much more to talk to, talk right. about as we head to August 2nd. Thank you, sir. There's a lot to do. There Thank sure you. is.